Welcome back guys, it's Israel. So with .NET 9 out now, I'm sure a lot of you saw one of the biggest changes is that Swagger is now gone. It's not gone as it doesn't exist, but it's not the default anymore when you create a .NET 9 API. So why did they do this? It's because while Swagger still works, it's not being actively maintained and cared for by its community owner. So nothing's really getting fixed or resolved and there wasn't even an official release when .NET 8 came out as well as a .NET team want to cut down on third-party dependencies, which makes sense because they've been working on and developing their open API package, which is now what comes installed whenever you look at your program.cs. This open API package can generate documentation for an API, but it's just not pretty like Swagger used to be. So while you can go ahead and just install Swagger again, I have another option for you that's well-maintained and very pretty to look at with a lot of other cool features, and it's Scalar. But quickly, I just want to give a shout out to all my channel members. If you guys want to see your name here, as well as get access to whatever code from whatever video on my channel, click the link in the description or the join button on my profile, then send an email to this email on screen with the code that you want access to. But now to continue the video. So with that being said, I've now moved over to my .NET 9 API and I'm already running it. So let's open this. And as you guys can see, this looks a little different from Swagger. It's because it is Scalar. But let me explain what is Scalar. So Scalar is another open source API documentation platform that gives you a very friendly user interface, as you guys can see, that makes it very pretty to look at. And you can change all the themes and do a lot of other fun stuff that I'm about to explain. It's very similar to Swagger, but it has some very key differences. And it's again, very easy to install with just a NuGet package and like one line of code if you want just the base version. So first to actually get to your scalar documentation, you would go to backslash scalar backslash V1. So then you would have something that looks kind of like this. So .NET 9 API is the name of my project. And then V1 is the name of like the default uh, document. So on the left right here, you're going to have your controllers, your endpoints and your models. And these are the models that are then used in these endpoints. So again, just to show you this project, so you have a clear understanding, we have an auth controller, a weather controller, which is the basic weather controller when you create a .NET API. And then here we have our weather forecast and our user model. So user and weather forecast. So super basic stuff, but that is all being shown right here. And then over here on the left, we have our two servers. So right now for local host uh, and local development, I have 44303. So I'd want to switch to that. And then right here we have client libraries. Why do these uh, come into play? It's because if we have that right here, it actually generates us uh, C sharp code that we can then interact with these endpoints. So I think that's actually super duper cool. And with maybe some tweaks, you would actually have usable code here and you don't have to, you know, do it on your own. And with that being said, again, we have that auth login here that tells us requires a username and a password in the body because we are using that user model and that user model has both of these as required. And then we have weather forecast here with some information on what actually all of these are, and that's coming straight from the model. And then we are using that in here and as well, it generates some code for us. So now after this quick little tour, let me show you guys how to actually install Scalar. So to do that, you're gonna go to your package manager and then you're just gonna look up scalar.aspnet core, install the most stable version, and you're good to go. And then to actually get it in your app, you're gonna go to program.cs, scroll down here under the map open API, and you're gonna add app.mapscalar API reference. And if you don't want any options, you could do something like this and that would work. But now let's look at all the options. So first of all, I just did the title. So I ended up setting my scalar UI high YouTube. So if I run this again, we're going to be able to see that title at the top. So looking up right here, you see my scalar UI high YouTube. So that's the title I said here. This theme is not the default theme. Uh, it's actually blue planet and they have a bunch of different themes uh, that you can go through all here. I won't go through all of them, but you can change the theme if you want. Another cool thing that scalar has by default, if I open this here, is down here, they actually have a dark and light mode. So you know how Swagger will just burn you with a light mode? Well, they have a dark mode, and obviously here I have the actual theme over it, but if not, it would just be dark. Uh, and you can toggle between that, and you can disable it if you want and set it always to dark mode as well. Uh, it's up to your personal preference. You can actually do custom CSS, and you can hide or show that sidebar. That sidebar would be this thing over here. This thing right here, the default HTTP client 
is set to C-sharp here, and that's essentially setting this right here so that we're automatically using C-sharp because this is a C-sharp API, so we would like to see C-sharp code in here unless you were to have it in some other, so maybe Node. So it would give you like Node to then hit this auth endpoint, but that would be up to the front end, the project, or whatever your situation is, but that's where you would customize it in here. And then there's a lot of other different options that you can set. And I can show you guys some in here. So if I go into options, you can set your servers. You can, again, set metadata. You can hide models so that they don't show up at the bottom. Uh, you can, again, toggle the dark mode and do a lot of different things. I'm going to link all the documentation for all these different options uh, down below in the description. So with that being said, let me show you just a quick demo of this actually hitting some of my endpoints uh, because I'm sure some of you will want to know that, hey, this actually works, right? So let's actually try and log in here. So I'm going to actually do a test request. We're going to click this. So we want to go ahead and switch this to 44303 because that is localhost. Then we are going to set our body here. So we're going to do test and then we're going to set our super secret password of test. And now let's press send. We see that we are actually hitting and we we're able to test this endpoint. So clicking all the way through, we should go back here and we're seeing that we are all good to go with our response from our login and we get our token. So let me copy this token over. And now with the token copied, we can now try and hit our weather forecast endpoint because it is authorized. So we do need our token. So with that being said, let's click test request. We make sure that this is set. And now what we need to do is we need to go to our headers and we need to set this correctly. All right, so now that I've set the authorization header here and added the bearer and then the token that we just got from our login, we can now press send. And we see that we get 200 okay. And in the body, we actually get our forecast data. So we were able to generate a token and then use it as a header in here. And just before we continue, if you guys found this video helpful, please drop a like on this video so it spreads to more developers on YouTube and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on all the other amazing content that I have for you guys. So I've showed you guys how to install Scalar. I've showed you guys all these cool customization options as well as the code generation, how to, you know, use these endpoints, enter your tokens uh, in the request and all of that good stuff. But I already know there's some of you thinking this while you're watching this video. In Swagger, I can just put in a JSON web token at the very top with, where it says authorize. And then that token gets used for every single endpoint after I log in. So I don't have to go to every single endpoint and do what I did in the demo of going here, auth, bearer token, blah, 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 for every single endpoint, right? That would get tedious. And it's like, I already have that set up in Swagger. Why would I come over here? Sure, it has some cool bells and whistles and it looks nicer and I would love to use it, but I don't have anywhere to do like a bearer token or somewhere authorized. Well, I got something in store for you. So when I was working on this video, I already knew that a lot of you would be very interested on how to actually use uh, your JSON web tokens in that same role, but in Scalar, right? If I'm going to tell you guys to migrate over to something, I would like it to be comparable with the same functionality, but then better, right? Why would you move over to something that's not better? Um, and I was struggling a lot because I believe from what everything I can tell in .NET 9 right now, Scalar is like easy to use JSON web token code is broken and let me show you what I mean. So the way Scalar tells you to do what I'm talking about is to do something like this. They want you to grab this code and then this code here should set the preferred scheme as bearer and then it should put your token and it should be in this dropdown list. So once you put in that code, you should have something here. But as you guys can see, I have nothing and all the different documentation for Scalar as of December 10th says that you have to do at least some variation of this to get that same type of functionality as in Swagger. But as discouraging as that was, I ended up figuring out another way, but I'm not going to take the credit for it. I'm going to give all the credit to my guy, Nico. I stumbled upon this bug thread of auth type not loading, which is the drop down. And then down here, I was like, you know what? I was like, maybe I can't, maybe I can, but let me add in my two cents so I can report that it, it is a bigger issue. And I put in the issues I was running into. And then Nico appeared. And he gave me an amazing solution that essentially transforms the open API documentation to then basically tell it, hey, we are using a bearer token. And then once your app is running, Scalar grabs that information and then correctly puts it 
in your Scalar UI. And let me walk you through what the code looks like. So what you have to do in your project is gonna be the following. So you need to grab this code and put it in here. So you're just gonna put the document name and then you're gonna set their options. You're gonna create a document transformer called Bear Security Scheme Transformer. So you're gonna create that class. And then essentially what you're gonna do, you're gonna provide a authentication scheme provider you then are going to go pass in some document information and then essentially what you want to do is you want to set uh, your security scheme as bearer and then as json web token and then you want to add that security in so once you have this code and you have it put into this program right here program.cs right here once you have that that's all you need to add you can get rid of this garbage code that doesn't work right now. Maybe in the future it does, but right now it doesn't. So now let's go ahead and check if Nico's code actually works. So with that being added here, and this is everything we needed to add in the program.cs, let's run the API and check what happened. Okay, so now that this is loaded, I'm sure you guys see something a little bit different, and that's that now we have this bare authentication token right here. So if you guys have worked with the Swagger version of this, it also asks you for the token and then it uses that throughout your endpoint calls. So let's go get a token and let me demonstrate it. So we're going to go back to our login here. We are going to get a new token. So we're again just going to do test. Now we make sure that this is correct. We send, we get our token. So now let's copy it. Now that I have this copied token, we're going to go to the top and we're just going to paste it here. We can check to see if it's good. Now let's scroll down to our weather forecast. And now when we click here, we see that it already pasted in our token so we don't have to do anything. So now we press send and boom, we have this working. So I again, will not take credit for this. This all goes to Nico for this amazing solution. Um, and with that being said, I have now showed you guys how you can do authorization, plus have all the cool and awesome customization features and options that Scalar gives you. So now it's just up to you if you want to go ahead and migrate from Swagger to Scalar. And with me so much talking about all these JSON web tokens and all of that good stuff, if you guys want to learn more about authorization and JSON web tokens, click on this video right here.